Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. We are here again in November at the Agroecological Permaculture Market Garden, Glassbren. There's no transition today because Abel has got some fantastic news that he's willing to share. So Abel, take over. Welcome back to Glassbren. It's November and time for our next uh, monthly garden tour. Now, you'll probably notice around me, things don't look quite like they usually would in November. We wouldn't usually have a tarp to my right here. We would usually have lots of plants growing here to my left. Um, and there's a very good reason for that, and I'll share that in a little bit. But for now, just because it's November and because these tours are about sharing the changes in the growing site over a year, month to month, what happens in the different seasons, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we'd usually expect to be doing and growing um, in November in an agroecological permaculture market garden. So in a normal year, these beds will be full of winter polytunnel crops. So polytunnels are amazing for summer crops. Obviously people associate them with tomatoes and cucumbers and aubergines. But one of the great things about a tunnel, especially in, in the Welsh climate, is that we can use them to extend our growing season and grow crops through the winter that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to grow. Typically we'd have this full of things like spring cabbages, which are for harvesting in March, April time. We'd have lots of winter salads here. There's lots of, lots of salads you can grow right through the winter. Um, not all plants will grow vigorously through the winter, but they will sit there growing slowly. So to give you kind of a crop come springtime. So things like beetroot, carrots, these things will sit in the ground through the winter. But you also need to think ahead in terms of where you're gonna need space come the springtime. So there's also an argument for keeping some of your tunnel free for planting early crops like spring onions, beetroot, carrots things you want to get in there in that little shoulder season between the end of winter and the time when you want to be planting your tomatoes, your aubergines, your cucumbers come May, June time. So polytunnels are a real asset. They're a really great tool for us as market gardeners in the winter time. I'd recommend the work of Elliot Coleman. He's really great. He's got a really great book called The Winter Harvest Handbook and that can really help you maximize your undercover space during the winter. Outside in the garden, a little more sparse. There's not lows you can do over the winter in the garden because we're obviously getting frosts, which we had the first frost this morning, actually. That kind of puts pay to a lot of the plants that were growing in the garden up to now. What we do have out there is things like overwintering purple sprouting broccoli, hardy overwintering cabbages like January kings, and some of our perennials are still out there. So we've just started harvesting our Jerusalem artichokes. And aside from what you're growing this time of year, we'd usually be thinking about our seed order. So usually we try and put our seed order in this time of year. So we're crop planning, we're looking at what seeds we need, what seeds we've sown. We usually do a seed audit this time of year. So um, what have we saved? What have we got in stock? And what do we need to buy from the seed providers that we work with? You can check that on an earlier video, probably back in springtime. Maybe it will be here or here or somewhere around when Jason does this edit. What else? We're closing down beds. You know, we'd be mulching beds. We'd be getting a nice thick winter mulch, tucking them in for the winter, creating some soil buildings, some nice warmth on the beds for the critters through the winter. Some of it we, like you see here, we cover with tarp over the winter to keep it warm and to suppress the weeds so it's ready to plant in come the springtime. Yeah, and generally also very important with looking ahead to a period of rest. So market gardening is very intense and it's very seasonal and from around March till around October, it's a pretty relentless, intense working life. You're obviously dictated by the weather, by the amount of light there is in the day, by the jobs that need doing, the, the demands of the plants, watering, dry spells, all these things dictate how intense that season's gonna be. But by this time of year, you kind of breathe a sigh of relief and you're like, oh, the kind of, the, co the shorter days, colder weather, the slowdown of all the plants is giving me the invitation to rest and to take some time to reflect, reflect on what went well, what didn't go so well, try to learn the lessons of this season to take into next. And that is the beauty of growing, is that every year you get a chance to start again. Every year you get a chance to take your learning and implement it in your garden and to try and be a little bit more successful. Maybe try to increase your diversity in your garden, increase your habitat, increase the amount of food you're growing. This is a time for, for wintering, really. There's that word wintering where just like the leaves are falling, the soil's going to sleep, the plants and trees are going into their winter slumber. We also as humans can do the same and our bodies can adjust to the seasons and the light and we can take it as an opportunity to replenish, restore our energy stores and um, yeah, be ready for, for when the spring comes come February time. So that's what really we're thinking about in the garden in November. Not a lot going on, not a lot of work happening really. Our volunteer days are finished. But yeah, just a few little jobs 
few little things to think about, but just leaving the land to do its winter thing and trying to bring everything together for a more successful growing season in 2024. But what's really happening in November for us, uh, very excitingly, it's some news that I've been sitting on for months that will explain why this polytunnel looks so sparse, why the garden looks a little bit sparse. It's because we are moving. I think I just hit the mic, so I'm just gonna do that. It's from the sun. Is that a black cat? I just checked. Sol? Oh, don't run off. Please. Just in case you're wondering why I'm covered in blood, uh, <laughs> is, I, we just, so yeah, as I said, last bread is moving, we're moving house. So, and we just spotted our cat up in the field, meowing, uh, and he got left behind in the move. So uh, I went to try and catch him. And in case you're wondering why I'm covered in blood, he didn't like that idea very much. He seems quite happy to stay here. So he uh, protested a lot and left me with a few nice scratches. So apologies for that. So I've been sitting on this special news for quite a few months now, and I've made little references to it through the other videos this year, but we can finally announce the really big news that Glassbrenn has a new home. We're moving to a 134 acre National Trust farm on the cliffs above the Three Rivers Estuary near San Stefan. Parker Agloid Lords Park Farm. So I'll talk more in next month's video, in the December video, about our vision, about our plans for the place, about what it's gonna look like, and the whole story and process of how we ended up securing this amazing new opportunity and moving Glassbrenn completely from here at Bronheil Farm over to Parker Lloyd Lords Park Farm. But this month's video is about saying goodbye. So obviously, this is an amazing opportunity. It's massive news, but there is a sad side to all of this, and there's there's a real letting go that has to happen because we do have to say goodbye to the site that we started on, the site where we put in our first roots as a sapling of a project, the place we've been working on with our volunteers, with our community for six years now, building soil, planting trees, creating infrastructure, growing loads of food for our VegBox members, teaching courses, so many memories, so many people, hundreds of people have had their hands in the soil have been part of shaping it into what it is today in you know at what what is now a a mature um, quite thriving ecological landscape of food where there's perennial tree crops perennial vegetable crops intermixed with annual veg crops in a truly designed landscape that saves water stores water stores carbon full of biodiversity a real diversity of seeds in the seed bank in the soil diversity of flowers and plants and wildlife too you know there's so much habitat for different small animals, birds, insects, soil life. What we've created here together is a real thriving ecosystem. And so when people ask what's gonna to happen to the old site, well, the good news is, is that this being my family farm, my parents really want to use some of the site to grow veg for themselves. And then other parts of it, again, will just remain as, as thriving, biodiverse, slightly rewilded ecosystems, you know, and there's nothing to be lost here because the work that we've put in, the disturbances that we've made on this space mean that now it will just go towards deeper and deeper complexity as an ecosystem. In that sense, there's, it doesn't feel like a, a loss of something. It doesn't feel like we will ever lose what we've done here, but there is a sadness. Yeah, a bit of a letting go. And this is, an, you know, it's a, it's a good time of year to be doing this because this is a time of letting go anyway, seasonally. So the, the trees are letting go of their leaves and those leaves are sort of dying and decomposing to become the soil for the next season. And that's very much where we're at with the project right now is we're having to let go and let something end, let something die, or at least in the form that it was for new life to grow at Lords Park and the new, new phase, the new chapter of the project in 2024. And I guess this video is about saying goodbye. It's about paying tribute to all the people that have made this what it is all the stories we've told here, all the laughter, all the journeys people have been on as volunteers here, and also remember, have it on film forever so that we can always look back. And that's the beauty of these monthly videos that we've done with Jason over this year, is that we have this record of the final year of Glassbren at Bronheil, its original site, its original garden, the place we started, that we can always keep as a record of what we did in our first chapter as we move into our second.
Wow, so it's it's been quite a journey. And how long how how does it feel to to have seen the place obviously you've grown up here anyway, but to see the specific area that has been Glassbren HQ, mm. how does it feel to have seen that change mm. over this time? Mm. It's been incredible. I mean, it's uh, a huge learning experience for me and all of us um, to sort of watch a design come to life. You know, five years is quite a good period of time to sort of see to see a designed edible landscape sort of come to a new stage of maturity. So the trees, you know, are at the point of producing fruits and um, the soils at a point of of depth and fertility and organic matter content that and we're really starting to see the benefits in terms of water retention and um, all those things that kind of, you know, you know from books and videos and and, and kind of the science. And um, But actually seeing it over time uh, and being taught by the landscape and by what's happening, um, yeah, it's been a massive learning experience. Um, it's wonderful to align your life with the seasons. You know, it feels like over five years, the pattern of my life and the pattern of our lives who work here are, are is totally aligned now with with the seasonal changes so i talked earlier about the idea of wintering and like feeling how your body attunes to that that because you need to have a lot of energy when when you know at that seasonal time when it's surging in the spring that's when you also need to have a lot of energy as a grower um, but then as that energy is dropping away this time of year um you can feel the body doing the same so yeah um it's a real privilege to do it. It's a real privilege to be living the growing life and um, and supporting ourselves that way. Uh, obviously, it's a really sad time too. It's really sad. To, I was saying to Jason earlier that um, you know we would we would uh, transplanting some strawberries and and just just looking at the soil and the quality of the soil and the depth and how how good it is after five years of no dig of the contribution of so many people in putting organic matter, organic matter, organic matter over over years. Um, that's really hard to leave, um, leave that behind. But I know it's going to be used and I know it's it's a great service to the land to have done that. And, and there's no regret around that, but it's just it's just a bit of a sting to leave that behind and sort of start from scratch. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a fascinating journey continuing. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to if you'll <coughs> let us to yeah. come and yeah. make more, more videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, don't know what yet. We don't necessarily have a plan, and I don't know if I necessarily want to do another month by month video. Mm -hmm. because, uh, but I'm sure it would yeah. still be nice to tell to tell the story in different ways. Yeah. So um, yeah, keep keep an eye out. We'll definitely yeah. be showing the Lord's Park Farm journey. I have a question for you, which might be, what would you like to see us do? at the new place in videos. Um, I think this is a working relationship that's going to continue long into the future. So yeah, um, yeah what would you like to see? a lot of content that will inevitably become a longer documentary yeah. in the long yeah. in the long term, um, yeah. which is a, is a potential plan. But I think for something like that, I'd need, we'd, I'd need to source funding. Yeah. Uh, and it's something I've never really done before. Yeah. So I need to kind of look into that. Yeah. Possibly, and maybe even have a Patreon at some point. I might ask you, viewers and say hey, guys you want to help us out and uh, go towards a project like that yeah but I'm not sure about that yet yeah um yeah so with that in mind uh, do we do have uh, one question today for you how does a market garden in winter keep earning money hmm. um so i mean with so yeah many videos ago we talked about the csa model uh community supported agriculture so for us historically through the seasons it's been um a case of our, our CSA season isn't the whole year. So often, so it's run from, the earliest we run it from was March and the, uh, usually ending around Christmas time. So um, there is a three month period of the year where, where in theory we're not distributing veg. But for us, uh, because we do the CSA model where members pay the season up front, um, essentially the, the, all the planning is around having that, that certain amount, set amount of money um, to sort of cover costs for the whole year. So you're kind of, Selling lots of veg through the veg box season to sort of cover that off season time too. Um, that isn't how everybody does it. Uh, and that's even other CSAs will continue through the year, potentially uh, maybe buying in more organic produce to supplement the box in those leaner times. 
Um, and then obviously, you know, more traditional market gardens who are selling to shops, wholesalers um, and direct customers uh, will endeavour to have more winter crops going um, so that they can continue, continue to crop, continue to sell produce right through the winter. And that's the beauty of these tunnels is, is you can do that. So obviously this one's very empty because we're leaving, but um, we could have this tunnel full of salads, uh, full of crops that we could be selling, um, you know, direct to customers through that winter period. So um, a lot of market gardeners try to take a break at some point because it is so intense. Um, so some do that around winter time, around Christmas time. Others do it more in that hungry gap time. So I know a lot of box schemes that take time off in the hungry gap because, and that's kind of April, May, June, um, before the summer crops kick in and the winter crops are all finished, um, when to supply veg boxes, you'd have to be buying in quite a bit of produce. So um, that's often where a lot of market gardeners take a, take a break from distributing. Obviously they're not taking a break that time of year from growing, because that's also when, you know, you're, You've got a lot of young saplings and you're starting to plant out but in terms of distribution that's often when people will take a break and um, we've chosen always to have a break in in december january february time because um because of what the weather and the season invites at that time of year is is, is to take a break so um yeah a lot of people do it differently um i think our aspiration in, in the future would be to to go as all year round as possible um because with this new site and more space we're going to have um, much more growing going on and we're going to hire growers so um, you know we'll have the more capacity and resource to kind of try to do an all year round veg box um, and store more crops as well so store crops are quite key to keeping going through the winter as well it's having squash potatoes carrots beetroot stored um, so that you can put those in the boxes when there isn't a lot coming out of the land um, yeah um, and then also I mean diversity is always a key with a farm, so um, having different revenue streams, different ways of making income apart from the veg is always a good way to go for resilience. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that question, Jessica. Um, if anyone else has questions, I still very much plan to do, um, so obviously we'll have, we've still got one month, we've got January, um, oh, December and January, so two months left, sorry. We, so if you want to put a question down for one of those months, but what I'm also planning on doing is a, like a longer video that's literally just a and a um, and just filled with questions from viewers. So if you'd like a question be to be posed to Able to do with anything that we may have covered over mm. the year, that's absolutely fine. Put it down in the comments below and I'll ask it in that video. Other than that, time to say goodbye. Time to say goodbye. Um, please stay with us. Uh, keep watching. Keep following us on social media. Uh, we do, uh, I now do a weekly um, newsletter, the Veggie Love News, goes out every Sunday morning. So head over to our website and sign up um, if you want to follow the journey, uh, stay with us as we go into this new site. Um, yeah, we'd love to keep um, sharing our story with you. So um, yeah, nice. and, and see you I'm, in December. I'm not gonna add all the other stuff on the end. I think that's a nice yeah. nice way to end. Yeah. And maybe we should just get up and, and leave. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Thank I'll see you. you in the next one. Yeah, nice.